Hey, what's the story? GoPro Hero 12. Let's dive into the video settings. If you're a pro or if you're just starting out on your GoPro, all of these settings are going to make you a GoPro Ninja. And I have got a tip that nobody is talking about. This is a super hack that you're going to get throughout this video. Let's dive in. If you're completely new to GoPros, keep in mind if you press the button at the side, you can go from photo to time lapse to video. You can cycle through the modes. Alternatively, you can swipe left to right and you can go through all the modes as we're concentrating on the beginner's guide here and the video settings predominantly we're going to stay in video mode so let's dive into the general settings first then we'll get to all the other cool stuff that's on screen so let's swipe down we get our first lot of general settings here so voice control this one you can tap this to turn voice control on or off depending on what you're shooting and may be useful it may not but you do you the next one here are the GoPro beeps, which can be annoying, but they let you know what's going on. So you can turn them on or turn them off. The next little guy here, this is like a, a, a bunny rabbit, a hare, I don't know, a, a GoPro rabbit. So if this is turned on, this is quick capture. So if you're out and about and you suddenly see something, turn on the GoPro by keeping the record button pressed and then the camera will automatically start recording. Boom. So that's on or off. Then if we go to the next one here, which is this little padlock icon, if we turn this on, that means the screen is locked. The menus aren't locked, but if we go back here, up the top, we've got slide to unlock. So anytime we touch the screen, nothing happens until we slide to unlock. Let's bounce back down to our first screen of general settings over here. This one can be quite useful. So this is the front screen options. So do we want the full screen? So do we want the front full screen completely filled? Do we want the actual screen, which may give you black bars? Or then do we want like a status? What's actually going on with no live preview of your beautiful face? And then if you want to save some battery, just turn the front screen off on the GoPro Hero 12. So I'm going to leave it on actual screen for now. And whatever selection you make, just tick the tick. Tap, yeah, anyway. Tap the tick. Yeah. The next one here is orientation locked or all. So if you turn the GoPro, it's automatically going to go into vertical mode for shooting video, for example, and the screen will rotate accordingly. However, if it's locked, it won't. If you've got the max lens mod, you can set it up here. So that's the kind of first screen of settings that you get. As you can see, it's not too stressed, not too taxing. There's nothing here is complicated. Swipe across. We have pair device, but because you've already paired your GoPro to your phone, you're good. But if you wanted to pair it again or whatever, then you can do that. But here, this setting here will also allow you to pair other compatible Bluetooth devices like AirPods and Bluetooth mics and all that jazz. Subscribe if you want to see that video, by the way. Now we've got controls here. So these are easy or pro. So we're kicking off things on the easy and there's very different functionality between the easy and the pro. But right now, this is how you change it, easy or pro. So for now, it's on easy. Now, this is the real juice here. Let's go to preferences. Set up auto upload. If you have a GoPro subscription, you can set up this to automatically upload your footage to the GoPro Cloud. I don't, so I won't, but you, you do you, right? Wireless connections here. This shows wireless connections on or off. If you're really struggling on battery, turning this off will get you an extra little bit of juice out of the GoPro battery. And the Wi-Fi band is five gigahertz or 2.4 gigahertz. You may not have a five gigahertz network, so 2.4 is what you change it to. You can reset all the connections if you want. So again, nothing too taxing, right? Now let's get things a little bit more interesting. Diving into general settings here, the beep volume, medium, oh, that's really annoying. I tend to leave it on low, but you do you. Leave it on low if you like your hearing. Quick capture, whether that's on or off, so you can power up, as we said, and start the GoPro by keeping the record button pressed or the shutter button. The fault preset. So depending on the mode that you were in, you could be in video mode or photo mode, what is the GoPro going to default to when you turn it on? So it'll be the last used preset. Um, we've got a lot more to come on presets and this is where the real power of the GoPro comes. But last used video preset, last used photo, last used time lapse. What's it going to go to? And then last used. So whichever one, if you do all video, then you want it started on video when you turn it on. So maybe leave it on last video. 
auto power off basically the gopro will turn off if it's idle if it's doing nothing so you can have it doing nothing for a minute then it'll shut itself down and never 50 minutes 30 minutes whatever the case may be and five minutes i think in most cases is good enough and then the leds the little lights that are on the gopro either they're all on they're all off or you just turn the front one off in most cases this isn't going to save you any battery and they are nice to see that things are recording so i tend to leave them all on now we're into the settings that you really have to pay attention to our bit rate okay so standard is fine depending on what you're doing I tend to set it on high because if there's a lot of motion going on, the more bit rate that you have, then the better the image quality is going to look. And overall, image quality is going to be better if you have it on high bit rate. It's going to use more storage space in your SD cards, but the SD cards are cheapish. So leave it on high. Now, bit depth. This will allow you to get GP log, that flat color profile. If you're grading your GoPro footage and you want that extra little bit of dynamic range, it has to be on 10 bit. Otherwise, you will not see this as an option, which you're going to see in a sec. So 8-bit is whatever. 10-bit, I tend to leave it on 10-bit. Now, anti-flicker. Depending on where you are in the world, electricity and light frequencies vary between 50 hertz and 60 hertz. So if you have a scenario where the lights are flickering like crazy, change from 50 hertz to 60 hertz. Now, again, once you set up your GoPro with your phone, it should default to where you are in the world. But for whatever reason, if you need to change it manually, this is where it goes. 60 hertz or 50 hertz. Really useful thing to know because sometimes you're like, what's wrong with the camera? Why are the lights all flickering like crazy? And keep in mind, all slow motion is going to make the lights flicker anyway. But just generally speaking, this is something to keep an eye on. Voice control, we have covered that, but you can get to see the list of GoPro commands here from capture, stop capture, start recording. There's a whole bunch of voice commands if it's your thing. Now, one of the other reasons I leave the voice commands off is it just saves a little bit of the battery because the GoPro isn't always listening to what you're saying. Swearing mainly. Uh, so yeah, and you can change the language if you now if we scroll down speaking of language we have some more language options there let's take a look at the displays so this is the orientation this is another way of having it just locked to landscape or just having it to orientate itself whatever way you have the camera screensaver so this is the screensaver for the rear screen here does that go dark after a minute or right up to never have it after a minute maybe depending on what you're shooting and depending on what you need because if it's on never that battery's going to tick down quite fast and then the screensaver on the front will it match what's going on in the rear or will it just never go off or do you want to set it to go off after five minutes two minutes or whatever i think the best setting here is just leave it on match rear screen brightness on the gopro you can make it really really bright or you can make it really really dark from 10 percent to 100 percent i tend to leave mine around the kind of 50 mark which is kind of difficult to get to with my thumb speaking of stuff that's difficult if you're finding all of this carry on thumbing around and fingering the gopro 12 there's an easier way to do this and i get into that towards the end of the video but anyway we'll, yeah 52 is good enough keep in mind the brighter the gopro is it's going to get warmer quicker battery's going to take down as well the rear screen grid this is really useful when it comes to composition so i tend to leave mine on and if we go back here we can see there's a line there line there line there line there if you're not familiar with composition this is what's called the rule of thirds essentially anything that's intersecting here is a good thing because it's more visually appealing to the eye so that's no way in any shape or form a guide to composition but that's a very very basic rule keep stuff and you know interesting around the intersections of the lines we might get into a composition video in a different video subscribe again right let me swipe down here let's unlock the screen let's swipe down and let's turn off the unlock see sometimes you forget these things go on so again we we are swiping we are swiping to the right now we are in the preferences and then we're going all the way down date and time if you want to change the days your time zone keep in mind once you connect the gopro to your phone it will set the time automatically based off of the gopro quick app which is really good if you've any mods like the media mod and so on you can see i'm none here you can change some settings for those in there about regulatory and reset now i don't know why this is but form an sd card is in reset that's where you need to go 
Also, you need to go here if you just want to reset all of the presets. Maybe you've made some. You can reset the camera tips and you can also factory reset back to day zero. Now, the camera tips, especially if you're starting out, could be super, super useful for you because they'll pop up once and that's it. However, if you've seen it once, they're gone. But if you want to see them again, then you need to come back here and do reset camera tips. Now we are back on the main screen here and keep in mind we are in easy mode and this main screen will change hugely depending on easy or pro. So first off here on easy mode, we have this W. What the hell is W? So if we tap the W, we can see we've got all our different lenses. So from linear and horizon lock all the way up to that 12 mil hyper view famous GoPro look. For me, I, depending on what you're shooting, you might need it, but I tend to leave mine on linear, which is pretty dang wide. Then over here, this one here, we have our framing. So is it widescreen framing, which is your full kind of 16 to nine? Is it vertical video? So we can see the GoPro is doing the framing here. It's completely changing. So to give you guys an example here, let's jump back and we can see, oh, totally different. So if you're shooting a lot of vertical video, this can be really, really useful. Now, also up here is the full frame. So this is using the full eight to seven sensor. It's kind of square, but if you do a lot of reframing and post-production, this is the one to use. Eight to seven all the way because you get the most bang for your buck out of the GoPro Hero 12 and the 11, by the way. Now, up here, this is an interesting one as well. It's really quick to access it. So if we press one here, we have slow-mo. So one X all the way up to two X. You're like, I thought the GoPro can do really kind of cool slow motion. It can, it can do a little bit more than that too. So let's go to standard quality. Let's tap that. And now we can go to basic quality, which I don't think you should use. It's only 1080. You're not going to get the most out of your GoPro at all with that. But if we bring it all the way up to the highest quality, 5.3K, you've got a ton of resolution, serious video stills. And then if we go back here to our little one X, we can now go up to 8X slow motion, which is 240 frames per second and 2.7K. And then if we go to 4X, it's 4K at 120 frames per Peter McKinnon, which is amazing resolutions and frame rates to get from a camera that is this small. However, these high frame rates will eat your battery more than you would eat. I've got nothing, but anyway, keep that in mind. And don't shoot everything in 4K 120. These should be slow motion clips for a little bit here, a little bit there and all of that, and you can quickly switch between them. But these are kind of limited to a point because the GoPro is telling you what you want to do. So what if you want to get complete control over your GoPro Hero 12? What we got to do, my friends, is swipe down, swipe across. Controls, let's change that to Pro. Now the game changes. You're really in charge. You want to boss this. So let's take a look. Our lenses are still the same. Now we have our stabilization option up here and we have a settings cog. And then we have this, which is called a GoPro preset. So let's take a look at this one first. Stabilization on, off, hyper boost, by the way, that's what it's called, not stabilization, if you get it right. And then you can go all the way up to auto boost, which is really good. They've made some good improvements to auto boost on the GoPro Hero 12 this year. So essentially it crops in for stabilization as much or as little as it needs, depending on how much action sports and cool stuff that you're doing. We're not doing any of that right now, but either way, auto boost is a good way to have it. Let's dive in here, video. This is what we have. These are the video presets and you have presets right across the entire GoPro modes from photo and time-lapse as well. But let's just keep in mind here, we're doing video for this video. And if we select this one here, this is what we're gonna use, right? And a preset is a really quick way of having a whole bunch of settings, boom, you're ready to go. So let's tap this. And if we tap the settings cog here, we can see we can now start editing this particular preset. So we can have standard, we can have that pretty cool HDR, or we can have log. And keep in mind, if you've 8 bit color, you will not see log. So let's go for HDR. Our aspect ratio, that's 16 to 9 widescreen mode, or we can use the full sensor. And then a resolution, so we can see 4K or 5.3K. Now you might say, oh, hang on, something has changed here. So depending on the modes that you're in, some things will be grayed out. So HDR will not give us 5K60, but if we go back, we can get 5K60 on the standard profile. 
but I'm just going to change this to HDR for now and we're limited to 30. So we can have the lens. Which one is it? Is it linear? Is it wide? Whichever one you want. Then hyper smooth. I'm going to bring it to auto boost. And our capture mode. So if you want to set your GoPro to capture a sunrise or whatever, you can set the time and whatever you need here to do it automatically. Just make sure your battery is fully charged, obviously. Or just use a power bank to keep it powered. How long would be the hindsight? So hindsight is something that you know, your videos will start when the shutter button is pressed. If you bring it all the way up to 30 seconds, the GoPro is constantly recording 30 seconds. So if there's something cool about to happen, you're not going to miss it if hindsight is on. I tend to leave it off and I miss all the good things, but you do you. And you can have a timer if needs be as well. Now on these modes here, you can see if we're going up and down, I have most of these open, but sometimes they may be closed. All we got to do is tap the drop down arrow here. And then in ProTune, depending again on the settings that you're in, you're going to have loads of different options. So to show you guys a lot of these, I'm going to bring it down to standard. So our shutter, I tend to leave this on auto, but if you're using ND filters and the gimbal and stuff like that, if you want that cinematic motion blur, you can kind of change the shutter speed to one over 50 or one over 60. But in a lot of cases for most folks, auto will be good enough. Next up is the EV comp. This is the exposure value. And this is basically how bright or dark a scene can be. GoPros tend to overexpose everything. So you can bring it down by maybe, you know, negative 0.5, but we can see we can brighten the scene and bring it all the way down to negative two. I tend to leave mine on either zero or negative 0.5. Again, you figure it out what you're going to do. And keep in mind as well, that might chew the battery a little bit more. Auto white balance or warm white balance or cool white balance. You can see it changing on screen. In a lot of cases, auto can be good enough. Sometimes you may get some weird color shift, but don't worry about that. And then you can leave it on if you're using the flat color profile. There's a dedicated GoPro lot and subscribe if you want to see a video on how to work all that jazz. You can leave it on native white balance. ISO min, ISO max. So ISO essentially is how bright or dark the sensor can get. And the brighter it is basically the max here. The uh, higher this number, the more noise and kind of grain and stuff that you're going to get in your actual image. For me, I suggest 800 and a push, 400. That should be it, should be no more. You get a pretty clean looking image. And speaking of clean looking images, sharpness. Sharpness is something on GoPros that I feel for years. It's always been a little bit too sharp. So it's kind of got that digital vibe, not the kind of clean filmic look. So I suggest you bring it on low. If you're out of your mind, put it on high, but low is good. Scrolling down here, we have our color. So whether it's natural, flat, or vibrant, again, depending on the mode you're in, this may change. And then our raw audio. So if raw audio is off, there's no processing applied to it whatsoever. In my book, if you are processing audio, you should be doing it on your editor, not leaving the GoPro do it. So you can bring it up to high, which will have a raw audio track with full processing, I tend to leave mine off. Wind, if you're out in a hurricane, it won't matter. The mic won't hear you anyway, but first kind of light little breezes. If you wind reduction on auto, it may do an okay job. You can have it off or you can have it always on. I tend to leave it on auto because just leave the GoPro worry about the wind. And then down here we have our media mod. So if you've got the media mod for your GoPro Hero 12, this here is where the settings are going to be for that. Now, if we look at this section down here, shortcuts, we have one lower left, lower right, upper left, upper right. So on the upper left, we've got nothing. So let's go and say, remember that EV plus or minus that we we're looking at? Let's see, can we get our EV comp up here? And now let's just select that. And if we go back to the main screen here, we can see on the upper left, we can now see we've got this extra icon. And if we tap that, we can now change our exposure value just like we did. So you don't have to dig into the settings. Now you can customize each one of these corners to whatever you want. And what I would suggest is the more things that you find yourself doing with the GoPro, you go, I use that a lot, I use that a lot. So that's where you figure out what to put on each corner. So if we go back in here, let's go back into the settings here. We've made all of those changes and that's good enough. But what if we want to save this? Select save as, we can have it called custom. Now, the one thing 
bad about these kind of presets is you cannot name them. You have custom, custom one, custom two, or you can have an air, bike, epic. So in this case, let's just call it epic. And that's it. Now, if you want to create your own preset, let's tap in here and we can see we have our epic preset. We have the first video preset that was there out of the box. All we got to do is tap create new preset. And then we can have a video or we can have it looping. So I'm going to go with video. We can make all of our changes here to whatever we want. I'm just going to pick stuff at random. Yep, that's a really good white balance, Vic. And I'm going to have that at random in hindsight. Turn that on. And then we're going to give it a name. So just because it's customized completely, <clears throat> I'm going to call it custom. Select the tick. And that's it. Now, if we select our presets, we have all of our presets. So if we want to go from custom to video, we can just do that. And it works right across the board for photo and time lapses as well. So if you want to reorganize all of these, right? Here's the thing. This little icon up here, tap this. We can hide them simply by selecting the little eyes so we can hide them on or off. Keep it pressed down. That's probably the easiest way to do it. Actually, that is probably the way to do it. So you can reorganize these whatever way you want. And we can see, because this is a custom GoPro one that came out of the box, you can't turn that off. But if we go back now here, we can see these are our presets. Simple. Now, I know what you're saying. Presets are cool, but I don't really want to be turning the camera around all the time if I want to jump into something quickly. So what can you do? Well, if you press, the record button and the shutter button at the same time, you are going to get the presets on the front screen of the camera, which is crazy, crazy cool. And all you got to do is press the mode button to cycle through the presets and then tap the record one for whichever one that you want to jump into. That's a super, super bonus tip. Here's something that I feel that if you're tumbling around here and sometimes the screen isn't that responsive, you can get access to the bulk of the settings on your phone it's very easy to do once the gopro is paired to the phone and just dive in there and make whatever changes that you need and it couldn't really be easier and that's another kind of a super super useful thing to know you're not going to be able to change everything but for the best part you're going to be able to change most of the things that matter because like tumbling around on small screens it ain't probably for my thumbs maybe it's not for yours what could be for you though is this video here. If you want to learn more about how to make better vids for GoPros and other cameras, make sure you subscribe.